Hey, what's going on guys? Dylan DeJesus here. Welcome back for another video, episode 15 of Reviewing Your Customs Heritage Contest Edition. So we have the final four of the long-awaited Heritage Contest participants. These were far and away the best ones in the entire contest, and we have a lot up for grabs today. So this is our biggest contest yet. We have a $500 total grand prize starting off with $350 to AngelusDirect.com as a gift card, and then a $150 gift card to DeJesusInc.com, our website. So you guys pick the winner for this contest. After you check out all of the entries today, make sure you head over to that first link in the description and cast your vote for which one you think deserves to win this grand prize. But before we can dive in, we have a really exciting announcement to share with you guys. Next week, we will be opening up entries into our custom sneaker course, the DCF Experience. Experience, there's only going to be 15 spots available. This is going to be a three-day course here in Chicago, and we are so pumped about it. Can't wait to see some of you guys there, so make sure you stay tuned for that one. But now, let's go ahead and check out some of these entries for this Heritage Contest. So first off, we have a pair coming all the way from Mexico from an artist by the name of Lagrimas de Vincent. All right, let's see what we have. Oh, we these are incredible, man. Oh man, wow. Before we get into those though, let's take a quick look at what else we have inside here. So a pack of stickers and then what I believe is a certificate of authenticity. And this is a really nice add-on. There's some additional digital illustrations from the artist Daniel Santiago himself. And then a little bit more about this piece, which is called Duality, since this pair is inspired by Dia de los Muertos, which is a holiday in Mexico in which they celebrate both life and death. So right off the bat, one of the things that I wanna highlight about these is this absolutely beautiful colorway used throughout. On the front of the shoes, I really dig how you use these warmer colors, these yellows and oranges with just a ton of great detail packed in this panel that wraps around the toe box. Then as we work our way back on the shoe, starting to use more greens, some almost like Tiffany blue colors along with this really beautiful turquoise and something else that I love on the back of these up against that turquoise color, how strong these orange flowers just really pop right off that turquoise background. Those are absolutely beautiful here. The detail that you were able to pack into all of these different skulls and the various flowers throughout this piece is truly remarkable. These figures that you painted on the toe box are just hauntingly beautiful. I love the choice to do them in black and gray with just the slightest use of color with this little bit of yellow added in. This pop pelt Picado effect that you did on the Nike swooshes along with the back tab looks really good. And I just think that overall, you did such a great job of really nailing this duality theme of both life and death. There's so many examples of that throughout this entire pair. Just a small one here on the swooshes that I wanna highlight would be how on one of them, you have Muerte written, which stands for death. And then on the other one, you have Vida written, which stands for life. So you really did a great job of representing that duality, life and death, in as many places as you possibly could throughout this entire pair. This Katrina woman that you painted on the outside of the right shoe turned out absolutely gorgeous. And the way that she stretches across, what is it, five different panels along with the Nike Swoosh is absolutely insane and shows just how talented of an artist that you truly are. And something that we need to talk about there is composition. The way that you composed all of this imagery throughout might be one of your strongest traits as an artist because anytime you're going to be painting a portrait like this, the most important thing is always going to be the eyes. And the way that you perfectly placed one of the eyes to be almost right in the center of the swoosh and the other eye to be on another flat surface. It would be very easy for an artist to just make a stencil of a portrait and then have the eyes stretching across two different panels. Right away, that's gonna throw everything off a little bit. So the way that you knew that you have to have your center point, your eyes placed on two flat surfaces shows how well thought out all of this imagery is throughout. You know, the more I examine these, the more I feel like this entire piece is a masterclass in composition. These little skulls coming out of the back heel tab, along with the sizing and placement of each of these individual flowers, you can tell was very deliberately planned out. 
Another really cool facet about these is that there's so many areas where at first it seems like you're just using brush strokes to create texture, and then all of a sudden they form this beautiful eagle that you can see here. Same thing with this area that wraps around the toe. You think that it's just gonna be additional pattern work, and then you discover the skull figure that is just tailor-made to fit on the toe cap. Then you also have these images that are on the toe box that we already touched on, and these are also sized to perfection. We have La Llorona on one of them, which is a legend about a Mexican woman who lost her children. And then on the other shoe, we have the Lord of Mictlan, who is the god of the dead in Aztec mythology. And then there's something else here that we also have to take a closer look at. Check out right above the skeleton's head how you could see the face from the Mayan calendar, and how the top half of it is in color on your eye stay panel, and the bottom half is still done in black and gray. That is just so impressive. And the way that you're able to fit all of these together onto one shoe, and it not be overwhelming for the viewer, for me trying to experience these, that is no easy task as an artist. So I think that composition and how well thought out all of this imagery is, has to be the best thing about these. Now, if there's anything that I would do differently on this pair, overall, the sock liners did turn out a little bit stiff, so those probably just need a little bit more fabric medium or a little bit more heat setting. And something that you will run into if those sock liners aren't very well heat set and that paint hasn't really settled in, since we have these painted tongue tabs, some of that dark turquoise color is very likely to rub off on this lighter yellow here. So with just a little bit more heat setting, that problem can be solved. If you're gonna be painting sock liners or the insides of shoes, always remove Remove those insoles so that we don't get any paint on the insoles themselves. Also a little bit of paint ended up on the midsole threading which is really tough to restore back to a white again. So this is sort of an opportunity to tell yourself well I have to paint this midsole threading a certain color anyway since I don't want to leave it half painted near the rear. This could have been a really cool opportunity to do a gradient within your midsole stitching itself to sort of match the gradient that you have on the upper. So how you have these yellows and oranges near the front along with this turquoise in the back. I think that a gradient on this midsole stitching would have really set these off. So overall, just a beautiful example of the Day of the Dead theme done on this pair. Also, if any of our Latino viewers are interested in checking out some custom sneaker videos that are done in Spanish, Daniel himself is part of a great team down in Mexico called Sneaker Art MX. They do some really amazing videos and there's some incredibly talented artists on their team. So please be sure you go and check out some of those videos if you're interested. And if you think that Daniel's pair should be the winner of our DCF Heritage Contest, please go ahead and cast your vote at the first link in the description. Next up, we have a pair here from Sundiata Art. All right, I'm digging the custom box top already. Dylan, AKA De Jesus Custom Footwear. Let's see what we have in here. Thank you. Dylan, thank you for choosing my custom to be in your top four for this contest. It really means a lot to get this opportunity to have my work shown in front of your audience. Thank you again, Jason Sundiatar. Okay, I said it wrong the first time, AKA Hungry Lion. Now let's see the shoes. Great job with all the wrapping paper here. Oh, dang. Look at that. That's crazy. He's really good. That is genius. Ooh wee, there is a lot to unpack on this pair that helps celebrate black culture and heritage through the different genres and eras of music with some of its biggest stars. Also, great job picking an Air Force One high as your canvas because you really get to utilize all of this space on this pair. This also feels absolutely ginormous. Has to be at least a size 13. Yeah, huge pair here. So starting off on the outside of the left shoe, we have Jimi Hendrix and Stevie Wonder. Then moving on to the inside, we have Michael Jackson and Billie Holiday. Now moving on to the outside of our right shoes, we have Jay-Z along with Aretha Franklin. And then on the insides of the shoes, we have J. Cole and Prince. Now the first thing that I thought to myself when I pulled these out of the box is, wow, was that a bold move to paint portraits that stretch across that Velcro strap since it moves. But then my mind was absolutely blown to see that you actually have the portraits themselves painted underneath the straps 
and on the strap. So you had to paint basically the eyes and nose of all of these figures twice and it lines up absolutely perfectly when the straps are sort of just loosely sitting there themselves. But to see that you have that underneath also so that no matter what you're doing in terms of how you lace up your shoes and how tight you want to do the strap and whatnot, that is so well thought out because this could have ended up looking a little bit funky depending if somebody wore their strap a little bit looser or a little bit tighter. But to have that thought process, what a great job by you. I really dig these fun music style patterns that you did on the toe box, eyelet panels, and your medial panel right behind your swooshes. And then all of the swooshes have this very subtle gradient that turned out really clean. The color palette that you chose on these, along with the way you decided to tackle these really graphic portraits that I believe you said was inspired by an old Obey t-shirt, fits this theme very well. So something else that I definitely want to highlight on these that you don't see very often in custom shoes is the way that you went back and painted all of these edges a different color. So usually on this panel that wraps around the toe box, you would go back and paint that edge totally black. But the way that you utilize this caramel color throughout all of the edging of the entire shoe, that's a really nice touch for these. The music pattern itself looks great on these. All of your colors are really packed in, nice and saturated. Your line work is super crisp throughout. Every drop of paint really serves a purpose on these. Although it may look like an abstract, super busy pattern at first, the more you look at it, the more you can sort of digest and start to see all of the little things, the little music notes, the pianos, the drums, the play button. A lot of cool stuff to break down when you really look at these. The black leather laces were a great touch on this pair and I think that if there was anything at all that I could potentially nitpick about these, some of the threading that we have on the Nike Air on that back tab along with the swoosh that's on the strap, you still see some white peeking through so all of those colors probably could have used another coat or so. But overall I think that this pair just achieves such great balance. The way that you left some of these panels all black just to really counteract some of these busy musical panels where you have some of that artwork, such a smart choice. Also, I love that you left the background completely black behind all of your characters. All of those portraits now have plenty of room to breathe. So if you're interested in voting for Sundiata Art as your winner of our grand prize, make sure you head over to that first link in the description and cast your vote. Next up, we have a pair from SP Customs. Ooh, we got ourselves a nice custom wooden box in here. I am excited to see what is inside. Dang, let's see. Hello Dylan, first off I want to thank you for giving me a chance to send these shoes in for a physical review. You have inspired me to really get into this sneaker customizing business and it's truly an honor to have my work recognized by you. I hope you like them. For the DCF Heritage Contest, I worked on a pair of shoes themed around Korean heritage. I included multiple different paintings and details throughout the whole shoe that represent Korean culture and heritage. For further explanations on this design, I have included a detailed description on my post on Instagram that you can also check out. S&P Customs. Okay, this is a really, really fascinating pair. Man, I love these rope laces right off the bat and dang, these dyed age soles. Oh wee, this is a sick pair. Let's go ahead and get all of our confetti out first. Man, I just can't get over how perfect this aged and weathering technique that you not only achieved through dyeing the entire shoe, but then also enhanced it through your painting process. It feels like I'm looking at an ancient Korean artifact here, but then the artwork that you did on top is just straight up bonkers. So starting off with the outside of the left shoe, we have a great strong depiction of a tiger surrounded by flowers, and that tiger is commonly seen in a lot of Korean folk tales and stories. But as we actually take a closer closer look at the tiger itself, I love that very subtle gradient that you did and just how crisp all of your line work turned out. Then on the outsides of the right shoes, we have this Haohei mask, which was worn during ceremonies dating back to the 12th century, surrounded by these colorful clouds. And again, I just gotta commend you, your line work is absolutely insane everywhere on this shoe. Then on the toe box, we have some imagery from the Hairei, which is a book on the Korean language Hangul itself. But I really dig this very subtle vignette that you did all the way around, along with these rips and tears into the book itself really helps add to the aged feel to these. Now moving on to the insides of our shoes, we have this floral pattern that's stretching to the toe box, 
along with this pomegranate that's stretched out over the swoosh. And on the other shoe, we have a recreation of the famous landscape painting Irwaro Bando. And then for the swooshes and heels of both shoes, we have the Dane Chong pattern, which is commonly seen in wooden buildings and artifacts. I think that this is such a killer angle for these, where you get to really see and enjoy this very unique Dane Chong pattern, this very simple black outline that you did around that heel tab and the swoosh really helps separate this artwork and really helps you just see how beautiful it is, especially up against this age shoe. Now all of these colorful areas are gonna pop so much more. The Korean flag that you did on the tongue was another great touch and these rope laces just totally set off this theme. Overall, this pair is masterfully put together. You totally nailed the theme here. The way that you laid everything out within this design just flows so beautifully together. The artwork itself is absolutely amazing immaculate and overall this is just as close as you could probably get to a near perfect custom sneaker so great job by you if you're interested in voting for these as the winner of the dcf heritage contest make sure you go and cast your vote at the first link in the description and last but certainly not least we have a pair from clarissa mariposa All right, we got colorful tape on the outside of the box. We got a colorful inside of the box. I can bet this pair is gonna be equally as colorful. Let's go ahead and check them out. Pack of peanuts suck. All right. All right, we got another special box here. Cool sticker. Let's see here. Hola Dylan, greetings from San Jose, California. Thank you for picking my pair to be one of the four finalists. I'm so excited and want to wish everyone good luck. My colorful pair was inspired by the beautiful artistry, culture, traditions, and history of Mexico. The monarch butterflies were made from model magic and then painted. My custom box is also handmade and painted. Everything I paint is made by hand, but I hope to experiment with an airbrush sometime in the near future. Fingers crossed that everything stayed put during the transit. Your competitions really pushed me to try things outside of my comfort zone and experiment, so thank you for hosting them and helping the community. Lastly, I've included a free car window bumper sticker I made based off of one of the designs on my shoes, a Katrina. Best Clarissa. P.S. Shout out to the mom artists who don't give up on their dreams. Absolutely. Okay, take a look at that. Really cool. Just a beautiful box. So right away, gotta give you major props for this presentation. I love how this box turned out, the way that you have them placed in there with these beautiful flowers inside. Anybody who receives that would be over the moon. But now moving on to the shoes themselves, you have this radiant Mexican themed design. I love these butterflies that you did. I believe you said you made them with model magic and then hand painted. Typically this is where you might see a custom lace lock or something like that, but you went ahead and made a really bold decision to include these butterflies. And I think it paid off for you because it definitely does flow well with this theme. The color palette on these flows perfectly, especially with that box that it came in. You have all of these purples and blues, these yellows and oranges. There's just so many bright and vivid colors you get to play around with when doing a theme inspired by traditional Mexican artwork. This really looks like a pair that you had an absolute blast making. I can just tell how much love went into these. I mean, it's wild that you did four incredible portraits on one pair of shoes with some really great imagery surrounding them. And you can basically feel the power and strength and emotion behind each of these women. And I love that each one also represents something unique about Latino culture. Another great touch here, which just totally enhances your theme of using these very radiant colors, is how you didn't use black outlines anywhere. So in all of your portraits, you have these dark purple outlines, which match your laces. And then for just some of your other imagery, these birds and these butterflies, rather than going with your traditional black outline, they have some of these other colors that you featured throughout. So that's something that you wouldn't see too often, but totally fits this theme perfectly. 
The detail brushwork that you included in some of these portraits, like these women's dresses for example, is absolutely astonishing. Since you went with these portraits and surrounding imagery that take up a huge chunk of your shoes, I think that for this design overall, it was a really smart idea to leave all of your other panels as basically just a solid color. And it was so smart of you to take advantage of any additional area where you could add just another splash of color, such as your midsole stitching and the air branding on the midsole. You just fully took advantage of making these as colorful as humanly possible. So if there was anything that I could point out on these that I do think could be improved upon, if we take a look at the portrait that's on the outside of the right shoes, we have one of those situations where one of our key points of the portrait is stretching across two different panels. So if you take a look at our left eye, that eye is now stretched across two different panels. So when you view it from certain angles, it can be slightly distorted. So anytime you can get those key points of a portrait, your eyes, your nose, your mouth, for example, all placed on as flat of a surface as possible, that's gonna give you the best results. So if this woman was basically just scooted over about a quarter inch or so to her left, then we could have both of the eyes on a nice flat surface. But overall, this is just a stunning Mexican heritage themed piece, and without a doubt, one of the most colorful pieces you'll ever see come across here on Reviewing Your Customs. So if you're interested in voting for these as your winner of the contest, make sure you head over to that first link in the description to cast your vote. So there you have it guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode of Reviewing Your Customs DCF Heritage Contest Edition. Let me know down in the comments which of these pairs you voted for. This is absolutely insane. To get to see all of these pairs next to each other, ooh wee am I glad I don't have to pick the winner. That is gonna be a very tough job for you guys, but a $500 grand prize is gonna go to a very deserving winner and this might be our toughest contest yet. I probably say that every time, but you guys continue to blow me away with every single one that we do. So again, I wanna say thank you to everybody who participated in this contest. Another great turnout and a huge, huge congratulations and good luck to the final four here. I, again, am very glad I do not have to pick the winner. So thank you guys so much for watching today's episode. Please go ahead and give it a like if you haven't already. Make sure you subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this in the future. But until next time, I'm Dylan DeJesus, and now everybody get out there and just create.